Hello everyone. Welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. In this episode of Neat Preparation, we'll be looking at previous year questions of medical entrance examinations in India. So we'll be dealing with the biology questions in those exams and the chapter specifically that we'll be dealing with is Animal Kingdom. This is the fourth chapter in the grade 11 syllabus of CBSE. Let's begin with the first question. Power of regeneration in sponges is due to A. Theocytes, B. Archaeocytes, C. Amoebocytes, and D. Sclerocytes. Let's look at each of our options. Option A, theocytes. This option is incorrect as theocytes are actually used for storing food granules. So it's a sort of fat tissue. So it's incorrect. What about option C, amoebocytes? Amoebocytes are also incorrect. They have a range of functions which include excretion, digestion, etc. But that does not involve regeneration. So amoebocytes is also incorrect. D sclerocytes are also incorrect because sclerocytes are instrumental in the formation of spicules which forms the skeleton and body structure of sponges so sclerocytes are not the right answer the right answer of this question is archaeocytes these are totipotent cells so that means they can grow and differentiate into any other type of cell and they're used for sexual reproduction and regeneration. It's kind of like our germ cells in the human body. So it's used for sexual reproduction and nutrient transport. Next question. The poisonous fluid present in nematocyst of hydra is A. Toxin, B. Venom, C. Hematin and D. Hypnotoxin. So we're asked to find out the specific name of the liquid or fluid present in the nematocyst, which is the organ of hydra which uh, poisons other creatures. So we have to find the poisonous fluid, the specific name of it found in hydra. So A. Toxin and B. Venom are incorrect as these are general terms for anything that's poisonous. So liquids that are poisonous are generally referred to as toxin or venom. These can be used interchangeably. What about option C, hematin? Now, hematin is a blue dye from other creatures that, are, that is used for coloring. So it's also incorrect. The right answer is option D, hypnotoxin. This toxin, it depresses the activity of the central nervous system. So the, the person who gets stinged by the nematocyst of hydra, who gets stung by the nematocyst in hydra, will have his central nervous system getting depressed due to hypnotoxin. Next question. The life cycle of tinea is A, monogenetic, B, digenetic, C, polygenetic, and D, hexogenetic. So, uh, in most cases of parasites, they will ask for the primary and secondary, that is, if there is any, hosts. So, the number of hosts that a person, that a parasite has in its life cycle are measured using genetic, the words ending with genetic. So 
monogenetic means one digenetic is two trigenetic polygenetic is more than two and hexogenetic is six basically so so in the life cycle of tenia the primary host is pig and the secondary host is human now let's look at our options monogenetic means one host so that's incorrect polygenetic is more than two hosts so that's incorrect hexogenetic is also incorrect the right answer is option b digenetic which means it has two hosts and as you can see pig and human are both hosts of tenia so the life cycle of tenia has two hosts and therefore it's digenetic next question the pigment hemocyanin is found in a chordata b analyta c porifera d mollusca let's look at our options but before that it pays to know what is hemocyanin now hemocyanin is the blue pigment found in body fluids of certain animals let's look at our options a chordata now these include vertebrates such as humans etc now these have red blood due red blood due to hemoglobin and not hemocyanin so option a is incorrect option b analyta they have colorless fluid so that means there is no pigment so option b is incorrect option c porifera has no body fluid of his own, its own it has a water vascular system so option c is incorrect the right answer is option four option d mollusca now this includes crabs snails etc and a particular kind of crab known as the horseshoe crab is now popular for harvesting blue blood which is which contains hemocyanin now hemocyanin is specialized by have having copper in the pigment while hemoglobin has iron let's move to the next question antidon belongs to which of the following class of echinodermata now the common name of antidon is sea lily and it is a form of echinodermata known as crinoids so we need to find which of these classes given here contain crinoids such as sea lily asteroidia our first option contains starfish so that's incorrect option b of uroidia contains brittle stars which are not crinoids so option b is incorrect there are a separate class of their own option d echinoidia contains sea urchins so option d is incorrect the right answer is option c crinoidia these have the organisms known as crinoids such as the sea lily feather star etc next question the scales in chondrichthyes are a placoid c tenoid a placoid b tenoid c cycloid d all of these now in pisces tenoid and cycloid scales are flattened and are found in teleosts or ostichthyes the bony fish while chondrichthyes refer to cartilaginous fish basically these guys have bony skeleton and these fishes have cartilaginous skeleton so b and c are incorrect so since b is incorrect d is also incorrect since all of these cannot be the right answer the right answer is option a placoid these are found in organisms such as sharks 
rays, etc., which belong to chondrichthyes. And these are very short and can also be found in the teeth of sharks. So the teeth of sharks are actually placoid scales. That's why they have such regenerative powers. Next question. Which of the following snakes is not poisonous? A. Naja, B. Python, C. Hydrophis, D. Bungarus. Let's look at each of our options. Option A, Naja, is the scientific name of cobras, and cobras are poisonous, so option A is incorrect. Option C, Hydrophis, is incorrect as these refer to sea snakes, which are generally poisonous. Option D, Bungarus, refers to crates, a special type of snake, a special class of it, with special, I should say, family of snakes, which are also highly poisonous. So option D is incorrect. The right answer is option B, Python, which are the largest non-poisonous snakes in the world. Next question. Birds are A, cold-blooded, B, homeothermal, C, poikilothermal, and D, homeopoiesis. So this refers to the body temperature of birds, and birds can maintain steady body temperature when it has food. So the energy derived from food is used to maintain a steady temperature. So let's look at each of our options. A, cold-blooded. Cold-blooded organisms rely on external environment for their temperature. So it's incorrect. Option C, poikilothermal. Now this is just another synonym of cold-blooded. So a poikilothermal organism is cold-blooded, so it's incorrect. Option D, homeopoiesis. Such a term does not exist for body temperature in organisms, so it's also incorrect. The right answer is option B, homeothermal organ organisms, which are also known as warm-blooded. So they have warm blood because they maintain a steady temperature and they use food to do so. So birds are warm-blooded. Let's look at this question. Which of the following substances is at its lowest level in fish food? A, actin, B, myosin, C, cholesterol, and D, tissue fluid. Now, fish food is an abundant source of protein. And options A and B, which are actin and myosin, are found in muscles, which contain protein. So these are proteins, so, so they are incorrect. Option D, tissue fluid. Since fish, a fish is an organism, uh, every tissue of it must, must have a tissue fluid. Now, this is basically fluids such as lactic acid or just even water that gets stuck. And in humans, it's lymph. So basically, that kind of fluid is always present. So it's also incorrect. The right answer is cholesterol. Now, it's not true that fishes do not contain fat. They have a substance known as omega-3 fatty acids. But those are not cholesterols. So they are not sterols. So Option C is the right answer. So fishes have omega-3 fatty acids in a trace amount, but they do not have sterols at a greater amount. So option C is the right answer. How many ovaries are found in birds? A1, B2, C3, D many. Now, birds are aerial so they have an aerial mode of life so that means it they should have the lowest weight possible so with keeping these in mind option d will be incorrect as having many ovaries would weigh it up option b and c are also incorrect because they're comparatively heavier than option a which is just one so having one ovary in a bird is actually much better because then it will have lower weight. 
than say two, three, or many ovaries? So the right answer is option A, one. So there is only one ovary present in birds. Next question. Gemule formation in sponges are useful in A, asexual reproduction, B, sexual reproduction, C, parthenogenesis, and D, parthenocarp. Now, gemules are found in sponges, which are a part of Porifera, the lowest phylum in Kingdom Animalia. So as such, they do not have advanced sexual reproduction. And even in sexual reproduction, they have cells known as archaeocytes, which are also used for regeneration. So option B is the wrong answer. Gemules are not formed due to sexual reproduction. And they're not useful for, the, for those as well. Now, let's look at our next option. C, parthenogenesis. What is parthenogenesis? So you have an egg, and it's usually fertilized by a sperm in sexual reproduction. But in parthenogenesis, without the sperm, the egg fertilizes into an organism. So that is known as parthenogenesis. So the organism, again, is haploid. It has only one set of chromosomes. Now, parthenogenesis in animals is only found in honeybees. While in plants, there are many organisms that use parthenogenesis, but in animals, only honeybees. So option C is incorrect. Option D, parthenocarp, is the product that's formed due to parthenogenesis. So option D is also incorrect. The right answer is option A, asexual reproduction. This, these gemules found in asexual reproduction in sponges are useful in protecting, or, protecting the organism against harsh conditions. So it's basically perination, which is the ability to survive unfavorable conditions, which is a characteristic of a sexual reproduction. Next question. The places of first, second, and third molting of Ascaris larva are, larva are A, soil alveoli lungs, B, liver soil stomach, C, soil lung liver, and D, soil intestine lung. Ascaris larva are usually found in, usually found in respiratory systems. Let's look at each of our options. Option D, soil, intestine, lungs. This is incorrect because intestine is found in digestive and not respiratory. Options B and C are similarly incorrect because in these options, liver again belongs to digestive system and not respiratory system. Our condition is that Ascaris larvae are in respiratory system during their molting stages. So option A is correct. The eggs are found in the soil and then they enter human lungs and go straight into the alveoli where they molt secondly. And then in the third molting, they're trying to get out of the lungs, but they're still inside in the various bronchioles. So they're still inside the lungs. So option C, so the third molting takes place inside the lungs. So soil, alveoli, and lungs. Option A is correct. Next question. What is left when bath sponges dry up? A, spicules, B, hold fast, C, sponge and fibers, and D, tentacles. Option A, spicules, is incorrect. Now, spicules form rigid structures, which are bony, while bath sponges are flexible. Option B, hold fast, is a living structure, while when bath sponges dry up, 
it means that the organism is dead. There is no tentacles found in sponges such as bath sponges. So option D is also incorrect. The right answer is option C, spongin fibers. These are the el elastic fibers found in bath sponges. So that may, that's why they're used for cleansing. Next question. Hydra receives impulses and stimuli through A, nerve cells, B, sensory cells, C, neuron cell, and D, nematocysts. Hydra belongs to Tanophora or Coelentrata. These are primitive. So their nervous system is also primitive. Option A, nerve cells. It's incorrect as these are found in advanced creatures. Option C, neuron cell is also incorrect as these are, these are found in very advanced creatures such as humans. And option D, nematocysts are used for hunting and not stimuli. So option D is also incorrect. The right answer is option B, sensory cells. Sensory cells form a part of the diffused nervous system found in organisms such as hydra. Which of the following are uricotelic animals? Now we have a couple of op uh, four options here filled with a couple of animals. So A, rohu frog, B, camel frog, C, lizard, crow, D, eagles, earthworm. What is uricotelic? Uricotelic animal means the animal excretes uric acid. So this requires very less water. And it's in the form of a paste. The excreta is in the form of a paste. Let's look at each of our options. Rohu is a fish and frog is an amphibian. So these creatures have a lot of water and uricotelic uh, excretion happens where there is very less water. So these organisms exhibit a monotelism. So option A is incorrect. Option B, frog is an amphibian. So that automatically qualifies for experiencing a monotelism. So option B is incorrect. But the camel is also not uricotelic because it has another form of excretion known as ureotelic. So this excretes urea. While it's not as effective in saving water as uric acid, camels have other adaptations to survive in the harsh deserts. Let's look at option D. Eagles, earthworm. Eagles are uricotelic because they're birds and birds usually have paste form of excreta. However, earthworms are poorly developed. And so they excrete primarily by letting the excreta flow out of their skin. As such, they do not include in any of these three categories. So they are, so the option D is incorrect. The right answer is option C, lizard and crow. Crow is a bird and lizard is a reptile. Both birds and reptiles exhibit uricotelism. Let's look at this question. In Entamoeba histolytica, the presence of chromatid bodies is characteristic of A, pre-cystic stage, B, trophozoite stage, C, mature binucleate stage, D, both A and B. Chromatoid, chromatid bodies in Entamoeba histolytica means that the organism is immature. And options B, option C, which is mature by nucleate stage would automatically become incorrect as the organism has become mature. Trophozoic stage is something similar to ad adolescence. So there the organism is starting to get matured. So 
trophozoite stage is also incorrect. Options B and C are incorrect. And since option B is incorrect, that implies that option B, option D has to be incorrect because this condition is not fulfilled. Therefore, the right answer is option A, pre-cystic stage. Before the formation of a cyst in Entamoeba histolytica, there exists a pre-cystic stage, which is immature, which so that has chromatid bodies. Let's look at this question. Just as xenocilia, xenocilla is to Yersinia pestis, so is A, Glossina palpalis to Wuchereria bancrofti, B, Culex to Plasmodium falciparum, C, Homo sapiens to Tenia solium, and D, Phlebotomus to Leishmania donovani. Now, how do we make sense of this sentence? Now, this sentence implies that there is a relation between xenocilia and Yersinia pestis. Let's look at a relation. Yersinia pestis is a microbe. And before attacking humans, they're supposed to have another host known as a vector. And so the xenocilla is a vector. So we have, we're given vectors and the microbes that inhabit them. And we're supposed to find which of these is correct. Let's look at each of our options. A, Glossina palpalis to Wuchereria bancrofti. Now, Glossina palpalis is not the organism which is, which is the vector for Wuchereria bancrofti. The actual organism for that is the Culex mosquitoes. Culex mosquitoes are instrumental in the spread of filariasis, which is caused by Wuchereria bancrofti. Option A is incorrect. Option B, Culex to Plasmodium falciparum. Plasmodium falciparum is the causal agent of malaria. And malaria has the vector anopheles, which is just another type of mosquito. So it's not Culex, but it's anopheles. So option B is incorrect. Option C, Homo sapiens to Tenia solium. Tenia solium, which is the pork tapeworm, is found in Homo sapiens, humans. But the term vector is applied to other hosts. So humans are not a part of this system. So vector, the term vector does not apply to human beings. So option C becomes incorrect. Let's look at the fourth answer. Option D, phlebotomus to Leishmania donovani. Leishmania donovani causes dum dum fever, or which is also known as Kala Azar. And phleb phlebotomus is the sand fly. And sandfly does cause Leishmania, cause Leishmania donovani to enter humans, so it causes this disease known as dum dum fever. So option D is correct. Let's look at this question: leech, cockroach, and scorpion. And the given options are nephridia, ventral, ventral nerve cord, cephalization, antenna. Now, this question implies that we should find out the organ or structure that is common in leeches, cockroaches, and scorpions. Leech belongs to Annelida, and cockroach and scorpion belong to Arthropoda. So we need to find something that's common in both of these cases. Let's look at our options. Option A, nephridia. Nephridia is used in excretion, but it's only for annelids. It's not there for arthropods. Arthropods use malphigian tubules, so option A is incorrect. Let's look at option C now. Cephalization. 
cephalization means the formation of cephalothorax, which basically means the head is joined through the throat or thorax section. So, so this is found in spiders, which are arthropods and not in annelids. So option C is incorrect. Option D, antennae is a common feature of phylum arthropoda. So option D is also incorrect. The right answer is ventral nerve cord. Now, since both annelids and arthropods are invertebrates, they possess a ventral nerve cord, while chordates possess a dorsal nerve cord. And the ventral nerve cord in these organisms is double ventral cord. Let's look at this question. Which one of the following statements is correct with respect to salt water balance inside the body of living organisms? Let's look at each of these statements. Starting from option D, the body fluids of freshwater animals are generally hypotonic to surrounding water. This statement is incorrect. Now, body fluids inside contain salts of nitrogen or others, which are formed due to body processes such as metabolism. And when salts are present in liquid medium, they generally become hypertonic. Hypertonic. So that means that it has more salt content, while the term hypotonic here represents less salt in the fluid. So that is incorrect. Next question. Paramecium discharges concentrated salt solution by contractile vacuoles. Now the organ contractile vacuoles is used for water balance. Paramecium usually resides in an aquatic environment. And so to maintain water balance, it needs to eject water. And that is done by contractile vacuoles. So option C is also incorrect. Option B, salmon fish excretes a lot of stored salt through the gill membrane in fresh water. Gill membranes are used for respiration. So that makes the statement incorrect. The other point that makes the statement incorrect is that salmon fish undergoes ammonotelism. So there, the ammonia, which is exc excreted, is very diluted as it's poisonous. So, and, so it requires a lot of water for its excretion. So it's very, very dilute. So option B is incorrect. So Respiration happens through the gill membrane and not excretion. So the right answer is option A. When water is not available, cam camels do not produce urine but store urea in tissues, which is found in the famous humps. Let's look at this final question. Which one of the following groups of structures or organs have a similar function? Let's look at each of our statements or options. Typhlosol in earthworm, intestinal villi in rats, and contractile vacuoles in amoeba. That's option A. Now, the first two options indicate digestion. So these are organs in digestion, the typhlosol and the intestinal villi. But the contractile vacuole is involved in excretion. So these are very different functions, and we need to find the group which has similar functions. So option A is incorrect. Let's look at option D. Incisors of rat, gizzards of cockroach, and tube feet of starfish. Now, incisors and the gizzard are found in the digestive system, so they help in digestion. but Tube feet are involved in locomotion and to some extent circulation. 
but they are not involved in digestion. So option D is incorrect. Option C, antennae of cockroach, tympanum of frog, and clitellum of earthworm. Antennae and tympanum are used for sensory functions. So antenna can detect the smell, humidity, etc. While tympanum is used for hearing, which are sensory functions. But the clitellum in earthworms is a reproductive organ. So it basically stores eggs. And sometimes it's used in reproduction as well. So option C is incorrect. The right answer is option B, nephridia in earthworm, malphigian tubules in cockroach, and urinary tubules in rat. All of these refer to excretion. So all of these perform excretion in different organisms. And that's all we have for this episode of NEAT Preparation. If you like what you saw, please like this video and click that bell icon for receiving updates of our latest content. Brain Blitz Audios is committed to having free educational content to all. To be a part of our journey, please subscribe to our channel. We hope that this video was helpful in your preparation for medical ent entrance examinations in India. Until the next episode, see you soon. Bye-bye.